Hey, you over there? Yeah, you. Say, do you like playing card games? You know, like Genius Invocation TCG? You TCG players are like mint in the wild, literally sprouting up everywhere. Hey, come on now. What's wrong with finding fellow invocation aficionados? Anyway, care to join me for a game? Ah, uh, all right, no pressure. But why would you be looking for people to play Genius Invocation in a place like this? Don't people usually come here to fight? <laughs> Whether you're throwing down cards or throwing punches, it's all a competition, isn't it? It's all the same in my eyes. There are lots of card players here in the fortress. When I saw you, I immediately thought, hey, even outsiders from other nations play cards. So I came over to say hi. Sure. Great! Since you've been here longer than us, you need to flex your seniority a little bit, right? Maybe you could start by telling us newcomers some stories about this place. I thought you would have already heard everything by now. All right, then. Did you have anything specific in mind? Or do you want me to just pick a topic? Why don't you pick? We'll let you know if we've heard it already. All right. Have you heard any strange rumors since you've arrived? Ben, did you know that there are some people who are always gossiping over in the corner? There are two guys who are always skulking around in the corners of corridors gossiping. The bigger guy is Quisto, and the skinny one is Lavarone. People call them the Bombshell Bros. I never really found their gossip very mind-blowing. And it's pretty much just the same stuff that I hear about when I'm at work every day. If you're interested, you can go talk with them. They tend to talk a lot of nonsense, but they aren't exactly bad. Hmm, good to know. Do you have anything else to tell us? Hmm, let me think. Sounds like you want to hear something a little more tantalizing. Oh, did you know that the Duke was also a convict in the Fortress of Meripede before? Huh? Wait, are you serious? That's right. The Duke was an inmate just like you and me. It seems he was exiled here for committing some crime. Who knows how he ended up rising up to become the Warden, though. To go from an ordinary inmate to becoming the manager of the whole place? I'm not gonna lie, I kinda respect that. A Forbidden Zone? Hmm, sounds like something that someone just made up. I've never heard of that. Where did you hear about it? It's just a rumor we've been hearing, but no worries if you've never heard of it. Do you have anything else you can tell us? Anything else? Hmm, not that I can think of. But I'll be sure to tell you anything interesting I hear next time. You'll have to play a game of Genius Invocation with me first, though. So I said, that's not a faucet. Hey, hey, who are you two? Why'd you come over all of a sudden? Oh, uh, sorry for eavesdropping. Sounds like you were talking about something private. Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> They're just looking to join in on our fun, that's all. Hey, don't pretend like it's okay for them to just interrupt us like that. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. You're lucky we don't mind extroverts that much. <laughs> you hear that, Quisto? What nice! Your expressions tell me you're looking to hear some juicy info, am I right? <laughs> but before that, it just so happens that I know you two. Really? Are we that famous? You kidding? How often does anyone get a personal tour led by His Grace himself? Practically everyone was talking about it. Word has it that you also caused quite the kerfuffle. A little mistake, huh? I like the way you put it. You see, people with a good attitude can join our group anytime. Unlike some of the others here. Your group? I'm Cuisto, and this is Lavaroon. People usually call us the Bombshell Bros, but don't worry. 
We're not playing with bombs or anything. It's just that our information is always so explosive, and we blow minds on the regular. So, you two really like to gossip? Whew, you sure know how to embellish. No, no! You don't get it. Knowing intelligence will make things better for you here. For example, knowing who's working with whom, who has the latest rumors, who's not getting along. Wouldn't you like to know all that? Whoa, all this info's worth something, you know? You should prove you're worthy of it. I don't mind him. Quisto's always this way. Just play nice and say something to massage his ego. The welfare meals. Talk about the welfare meals. Right, right! That meal we had yesterday was super delicious. Paimon can still taste it whenever she closes her eyes. Is that so? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I've been helping out with making those welfare meals. I've been working as a kitchen assistant for about a month and a half now. Oh, so you're the one who made those delicious steaks. Amazing! You could be a professional chef! You are correct. I am a true professional. In fact, I even went to culinary school. Since you like my cooking, I guess that means we share similar tastes. Listen carefully. This little bombshell will help you learn what's really going on here in the fortress. Listen, kids. The power structure within the fortress is quite complicated. The overworlders couldn't care less about us down here. We're basically dogs to them. You've already met the one person here you should never cross, the Duke, Risley. He knows more than you think. And if he doesn't care about something, then he often doesn't bother dealing with it. Those who have the Duke's attention get all kinds of special perks, even better treatment in the infirmary. I know who you mean. It's that jury character, right? I don't think there's anything useful about him at all. Why does he visit the infirmary practically every day? Is it normal for anyone to be going in and out of there so often? If you ask me, he's just faking it to get out of work. But did you know that Churia was a talented researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute before he came here? There's no denying that. I don't care if he was a researcher that could turn dirt into Mora. Once you're in the fortress of Meripede, you're just another inmate like everybody else. Speaking of which, the last time I saw him, he was passing by in the corridor with Lorveen. I also heard they started arguing in the library and got into a fight, right? Guess that's just how terrible of a guy he is. You mean he hit a woman? Wow, I never imagined he was that bad. But that Lorveen's also quite the odd one, you know? She's always gabbing away, got into a fight with a man, and she also got sent to the infirmary. Come to think of it, I always see her going to the sick bay every couple of days, too. Hmm. Huh. Wait a second. You don't think? Do you think it... Could it be that... They're secretly meeting there to go on dates? Ah, but it's really hard to imagine. <laughs> After all, I do remember seeing Lorveen beat Jerry to a pulp that one time. And we might be overthinking things. all right for us to talk about people behind their backs like this? That's just how it goes. Good gossip is still gossip. Yeah, I guess you're right. But, but, but wait, we're, we're not just gossiping. This is legit information we're discussing here, right? Those bumpus parasites on the surface act like they're all a bunch of aristocrats. Do any of them give half a hoot about a bunch of dogs like us? Hey, speak for yourself, mate. I'm no dog. Oh, you think you're special or something? If you're here, then you're just a convict like the rest of us. 
I've heard that even if you're released after serving your sentence, going back to life on the surface ain't any better. Once a criminal, always a criminal. We're marked for life. Uh, I don't buy that. Hey, how cool would it be if the whole world was destroyed by a giant flood and everyone had to start over from nothing? What kind of filthy bilge water are you spewing? I have family up there. You best shut your sewer hole with talk like that. Listen, things ain't so great on the surface, but who says that you have to leave? I've heard that you can still stay here and work even after you've served your sentence. Not bad if you ask me. Who wants to live in the ruddy overworld anyway? <laughs> and what makes you think they'd want to hire someone like you? <laughs> It's one of the great mysteries of the universe, how someone as useless as you is so confident. Whoa. Sounds like they're really unhappy about the overworld. Speaking of which, Paimon never heard anyone use the words overworld or underworld when we were living up there. Is it only something the inmates down here say? That's true. Okay, we've talked to just about everyone, and it's about time for us to go meet Linny. According to the card he left us, we should go meet him in the production zone. something? Hey, this is no time to be modest. Just tell him we found a boatload of information. Oh, as expected of the legendary duo, you have my full and undivided attention. Huh. I'd have never guessed that myself. The rumors swirling about this place are unreliable after all, and Master Child probably went missing because he found a way out. He is a harbinger, after all. I suppose he's much more resourceful than I initially gave him credit for. Unfortunately, this isn't enough for our final report to Father. We need to find out Master Child's exact whereabouts. Father told me that even though Master Child said he was just coming to Fontaine for a vacation, he actually had some personal reasons. His agenda might be linked to his disappearance. His escape route is already flooded, so we'll have to test someone with professional diving skills to chase after him. Well, when you put it that way, it's obvious that only Fremenet would be up to the task. Bingo! Is he around? He's working today. Coming here as a group would have attracted too much attention. I'll talk to him about it later. It's the least I can do. 
We are all in this together, so it's only fair for us to fulfill our end of the bargain. Honestly, I'm far more impressed by you guys managing to collect all this information right under Risley's watchful eyes. <laughs> Collecting information has always been our strong point. Now, let me think. To find out more information, Fremine will have to retrace Master Child's original route. And if he's to do that, he'll have to set out on the next pipe cleaning day at the earliest. That's six days from now. Hmm. And after that, he'll probably take another two or three days to return. You can even estimate how long it'll take for him to get back? We've been working together for a long time. We know each other's capabilities like the backs of our hands. Traveler, what say you to meeting here nine days from now? We'll be able to pick up Fremenet while we're at it, too. Oh, and there's just one last thing we'd like your help with. Though we can just sit back and wait for Fremenet's report on Master Child's whereabouts, we still need to make more progress on the investigation of the Forbidden Zone. Fremenet's no master of disguise, Lynette's still working on getting intel from the other areas, and I'll need to spend some time helping Fremenet prepare for his diving mission. So, you are the only ones we can count on. What do you want us to do? Will it be hard? Well, I won't call it easy per se, but I think you'll be able to pull it off. Listen carefully. You'll need to find an excuse to get into the infirmary and investigate the room and environs. You've mentioned several sketchy-looking people always meeting at the infirmary earlier, so it probably has something to do with the secret we're hoping to uncover. You've already met the head nurse, so she'll be less suspicious of you. Investigate the internal structure of the infirmary and any active dealings within, and pass those on to me alongside anything else you're able to discover. But also, there's no need to take risks. Don't forget, safety always comes first. No, when it comes to intelligence gathering, I'd never consider you to be an amateur. Didn't you say it yourself? It's always been your strong suit. I'll believe anything as long as it comes from you. So, please prove your prowess to me once again. Alright, then we'll head out as soon as we finish our prep. Let's go our separate ways for now then. Don't forget, we meet here again in nine days. Stay safe. Out of the way. Eh? Oh, that's good. But 
I'll continue my diagnosis of the patient now. Please relax and take a deep breath. damage to your organs either. Does it hurt when I press here? Oh, and here? Huh? But based on my initial checkup, there shouldn't be a problem here. Oh, how strange. So that's what it is. I think you just ate something that disagreed with you. That's all. Nothing too serious. Huh. Outside of a pretty bad stomach ache when it decides to act up. <sighs> so that's what it is. Thank goodness it's not anything more serious. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and there have been other inmates complaining about the food recently. I'll inform our head chef, Mr. Wolsey, of this problem as soon as possible. Congratulations! The health risk is incredibly low, so you should recover within a couple days. Why don't you take a rest here while I go get some medicine for you? Miss Lorene, I'll have to trouble you to help me look after this new patient while I'm gone. Very well. <sighs> and she hopped away just like that. Hello, so how are you feeling now? Her stomach aches really bad. She was stumbling about the whole way here, so Paimon's really worried. If Miss Sijuin says it's not a serious problem, then there's no need to worry. She's the best medic we've got down here. But it also looks like she's the only medic you've got down here. Ah, uh, well, that's true. What do you mean, that's true? That's really misrepresenting the situation. Of course I can't speak for the whole fortress, but it's not like everyone imprisoned here is useless, you know? Though they may have committed crimes and gotten locked up here as a result, they still know a thing or two about medicine, and they help Miss Sishuin take care of the sick and injured. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But did you have to lecture me about it in front of another patient? Aren't you a patient, too? Where did all your energy come from? Uh... Huh, that's correct. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. Are you two also sick? We've been sick a while. I come back every once in a while for checkups, and to pick up the medicines Miss Sijuin prescribes for us. That's just the nature of chronic illnesses. As for her... <laughs> you could say she fancies herself as Miss Sijuin's capable helper because she learned a bit of medical knowledge ages ago. Please watch your mouth, Mr. Jurier. Don't forget that you are the primary reason I have frequent heart palpitations. Hey, don't start arguing now! Please, keep it civil at least! Release. It's way too early for us to even think about that. And who the heck knows if we'd even be able to continue our previous lives? Please allow me to end this boring and useless conversation. Oh, and Mr. Jurier, I don't want to see your face here again anytime soon. And same to you, Miss Lorvine. Anyway, that was more than enough rest for me, so I'm going to get out of this excessively noisy place. See you later, everyone. He just slowly walked off? Like that? Hmph. 
That's just what he's like. I'm sorry you had to see all of that. I'm Lorveen, and that's... Well, his name is Jurier, but I hope you'll never have cause to remember his name. You really can't stand him, huh? I mean, can you blame me? Who would like someone who's as arrogant and obsessed with weird research topics as he is? <clears throat> but there's no need to keep dwelling on him. I... I'll accompany you two for a while. Miss Zishween should be back soon, and I'm sure you'll feel better as soon as you've had some of her medicine. No, no. It's nothing. I'm back! Did you rest like you promised? Thank you for getting our medicine, Miss Zishween. Did you all cooperate with your bed rest? I trust that nobody got up to walk around. <laughs> Good. Here, this should be two days' worth of medicine for you. Take one pill now, and then continue your bed rest. Ah, uh, Miss Lorveen, I left in a bit of a hurry just now. Do you still remember if we discussed the color of the pill that you should be taking today? Huh. I remember. You said it should be yellow. Yellow, huh. I understand. These are yours. Please, make sure to go to bed early after taking them tonight. You'll benefit from a good night's sleep. All right, then I'll also be on my way now. I hope you feel better soon, too. See ya! I'm going to fill out your medical record now. You're widely known as the Traveler, right? I just want to double-check a few details, if that's all right with you. Those two made quite the commotion just now, so why don't we let the Traveler rest? Paimon can answer the questions instead! Mm-hmm. So her primary symptoms are abdominal pain, with secondary symptoms of nausea. Is there anything else? Hmm. That's it! All right, then. Is there anything we should know besides to take the meds? No, her base constitution is quite good. So, I'm sure she'll recover quite quickly after taking the medicine. Please, make sure to stick to bland or less stimulating foods. And don't stay up too late at night. Got it! Paimon will hold the Traveler to that for sure! Oh, you're going to take a nap already? Okay then, you get some rest. Mm -hmm. We've been to lots of places together. She may look a bit under the weather now, but she's actually super strong. Oh, so you're the best of companions. Well, don't worry, she'll recover soon. But we never left! Well, now you can go back without a worry in the world. Remember to take your meds regularly. And remember, bland foods! Mm-hmm! Thank you, Miss Sijuin! Seems like a lot of people have been coming down with an upset stomach lately. <sighs> I'll need to address that. Time to go! Asleep. She seems like she's just as 
sincere nurse, and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary? Time to go. Did you two run into any trouble over the past few days? No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you've sent. Fremine successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago. And as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you did in exchange for Fremenet's help, you've already done more than enough. Infiltrating a guarded stronghold is a different kind of job from a one-off investigation. We want to avoid using the same faces over and over and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should be the one to finish the job. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. Hmm, perhaps that's true. You're both very good people, and we've come to appreciate that more than anyone else. Unfortunately, there's still one thing that could get between us, lest you've forgotten. The matter of our respective loyalties. You've mentioned before that you've had some run-ins with the Fatui. I can understand that feeling, so I assume you're just helping us out of the kindness of your hearts? Well, everyone could use some more friends! We'll be counting on you to help us in the future, too! Mm-hmm. Since I see you as friends, then it's even more important for us to protect you from any peril. Fremine and Lynette feel the same way. Glad to hear it. Then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremine returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. Is now really a good time to go over? According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Lynette knows this as well, so this should be a good time to meet up with her. Also, I'm her brother, remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Okay, then let's head over right away! Lynette should be here right now. Huh. Strange. Uh, Lynette? As expected, Sijuin isn't here, but why isn't Lynette here? No, Lynette rarely deviates from the plan. We agreed that if she were to make changes on the fly, she'd find a way to let me know. Unless... Let's see if there are any clues around here. We can look while we wait for her. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back soon. 
Okay. Hip. None of the beds have any signs of having been slept in. Except that one over there. That's the one Lynette must have used, right? You said she was pretending to be sick. Mm-hmm. She would have said her migraine was having a particularly bad flare-up. Generally speaking, the head nurse would then ask her to lie down and rest while she left to retrieve the medication. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or the nurse intentionally left it this way. <sighs> Some books here and a few files. They all look like medical records. Hmm. Advanced nursing, how to raise the spirit of your patients, a quick guide to the psychology of emotions, and the meaning of laughter. These sure are some interesting books. Who knew Sijuin would be interested in these kinds of things? She even has books on understanding people's motivations and feelings. Hmm. Is it because she's a melody? Or does she have a need to understand her patient's emotional state? Hmm... Seems quite normal to me. These are skills that would come in handy for a nurse from time to time. Ah! This is it! We saw it before! Wait, this thing? It doesn't look like it's been disguised that well. The space behind it is empty. From its size, I don't think it's an entrance that is meant to be taken apart. There's probably a mechanism around here somewhere. Could Lynette have tried to get inside? But if that's the case, she would have contacted me for sure. Hmm. Let's look around here for some more clues. Don't panic, just take another look. It's right over here, and there's a bunch written on it, too. It reads, Out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card as the medium to pass on my message. You may consider this as me giving you my best regards. This is... Is... is that all? The back! <sighs> this... this is... Show me! Now! <laughs> that, that look on your face! P Paimon's reading it now! Would you care to guess where Miss Lynette of the Fatui could be right now? No! Could she have... Is she already... Rithesley... Did he deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Wait, you mean... He was aware of our ghouls from the very beginning? But... Why? We didn't run into any trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since! Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervulet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? <laughs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. This is not like what happened last time. The situation's different now. <clears throat> Wait, you're right. Wait, but that means the fact that Fremenet was able to leave the grounds. Could Risley have let him go as well? But what does he gain by letting Fremenet leave like that? So he's challenging me and trying to provoke me, I'm sure of it. We never should have sent out Fremine. We had to go through all that trouble to find an opening to sneak him around the guards and into the pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. Lenny's getting more and more panicked. We have to calm him down. Don't be like this, 
Linny. Fremini wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child. That was our fault. No. I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. I was the one who failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Risley. Hey, don't be reckless! Traveler, please, talk some sense into him! I simply cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back! He's rushed out the door! After him! Hmm. Right. I feel like we still have some room to make changes on these details. It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Whoever's outside is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Are you okay? Ah, oh, these two. As expected, they've already found this place. Oh, they are quite sharp. What a delightful turn of events. I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. I like the feeling of being trusted. Oh my! What's wrong, little one? There's no need to panic. Take a deep breath before you begin. Being able to read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Wait! Wait! It's no use, we have to catch up to him! <laughs> <laughs>